Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane and in this video we will cover our portfolio update. We did add $1,719 in new capital to the portfolio so we will cover everything that we purchased with those funds. We'll also cover any dividends paid out and any options I was in for the week. But before we get into the video, for those of you who may be stopping by for the first time on this channel, we focus on dividend growth investing. It's not rocket science. In my opinion, the best way to do anything, keep it as simple as possible. So it really boils down to consistently investing, buying dividend growth stocks and growing companies with positive cash flow and cover and more than covers a dividend and companies with a high return on their invested capital. I utilize both a dollar cost average approach, consistently investing into the portfolio on a weekly basis. I also do larger purchases whenever I get a bonus or maybe do a side job, something along those lines. I do cover all my investments into the portfolio every, typically every Sunday morning. Sometimes they are late. The last couple have been on Monday afternoon, but typically it's every Sunday morning. Weekly, uh, I will cover what I'm doing in my portfolio. I think it's important for some newer investors out there to see a real portfolio built out over time. Maybe some investors that have been in the market for a little while, maybe things aren't going your way. That's all right. It happens. We all make mistakes along the way. We just need to learn from them and continue to move on. So hopefully this channel can provide that for some of you out there who may be on the fence too. Maybe you haven't got into the investing game and you're wondering, well, can I do it? You know, I don't have a background in that. I do not have a background in finance. I didn't go to college for it. My parents are not wealthy. No one taught me how to do this. So I'm doing it. Or I'm learning as I go and I'm sharing that journey with you so that again hopefully it will help give you a little bit of encouragement that yes you can be your own investment you don't have to pay someone to invest for you you can do it over time and that is what this channel is really really all about and before we get rolling here I would like to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch comment and like the videos and a special thank you to the subscribers of the channel I really do appreciate it the channel continues to grow because of people like you and if you have not done so if you could take a second, do me a big favor. It doesn't cost you anything but a second of your time. Hit that thumbs up button down below if you find any value in the content. If you are a dividend growth investor, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Click that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. I do a stock pick of the day series Monday through Thursday whenever the market's open where we take a look at a, a company stock that's pulled back on the day to see if it is presenting any value. So if you have a suggestion for that series, go ahead and drop it down below. One more reason to click that that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out that video and again special thank you to all the subscribers out there one last thing one of the big metrics that the YouTube algorithm uses is watch time so if you could watch the videos to the end I would really appreciate it and again thank you to everyone who's taking the time to do that now into the options the first uh, activity in the portfolio this week on the 14th we did get the BABA one BABA covered call right negative one equals 100 shares so when you see that negative one that's one contract one contract represents 100 shares so I own 100 shares of BABA so I do a covered call that's why they call it a covered call the, the shares are covered by the shares that I own and it had a uh, expiration date October 18th with a strike price of $117 that's the price I'm willing to sell the shares at so if it ends at the 18th above $117 then the shares would be called away if it's under that which it was I keep the premium which in this case was $33 per share after fees it amounts to $32.45 and it did <clears throat> expire worthless, so that means it was under the 117, so I keep the 100 shares, I keep the $32.45 in options premium, and I will run this again. If you were watching the channel last week, you know that I've been running this Baba call for a while now. I'm gonna continue to throw it out there and see what hits. Last week was a little better, around $100. This week, not so, not so much, but we did throw out several others that did not hit. I usually put out four, five, if not six options, uh, you know, I, it's nice whenever I get two or three, but I'll take one and we'll continue to, to reinvest that options premium back into the portfolio. Now, first and only dividend for the week came in on the 15th. We did receive dividends from Realty Income, ticker O. This is the monthly paying REIT out of the real estate sector. Paid us $68.13 and we do have the DRIP set on the portfolio. So that means dividend reinvestment plan. That's what DRIP stands for. And that means anytime a company in this case realty income pays out dividends the $68.13 it goes right back in and buys more shares automatically I don't have to do it my brokerage takes care of that at whatever the strike price is in this case it picked up 1.08645 more shares of realty income 
and these 1.08645 shares added an additional $3.43 in passive income over the next calendar year. So when you hear people talk about the dividend growth effects, uh, dividend growth effect or compound interest, this is what they are talking about, right? So I already owned shares of realty income. Those shares paid as dividends, those dividends buy more shares, and those new shares add additional passive income. That is the dividend snowball in effect. Now, obviously, if I add to realty income while this is going, it will compound that effect. And the hill that this is rolling down is time, right? So even if I don't add any more capital here, this is going to continue to grow larger and larger and larger the longer I reinvest these dividends back into realty income. Obviously, me adding new capital again will help speed this uh, dividend snowball up. <clears throat> and now we get into some of the new capital into the portfolio. We did add $1,227.19 on the 15th. This was Tuesday. So Monday we did the covered call. Tuesday we went back in and picked up some shares of some of the companies we wanted to buy this week. And with that $1,227.19, we picked up 10 shares of Valet, ticker V-A-L-E. This is a mining company out of the material sector. This is also a foreign company, so there are some tax implications around these foreign companies whenever they pay out dividends. You just want to make sure you understand whether your brokerage takes it out, my brokerage takes mine out right away, or whether you are going to be responsible for it at the end of the year whenever you pay your taxes. Just make sure you know which way you're going on that one. So we picked up 10 shares at $10.79 per share. We added six shares to our Lamb Research Corporation position. If you were watching last week, we sold out of Bank of America. We picked up a big chunk of Lamb Research. We're going to continue to build this one out. I want to get to well over 100 shares. Wouldn't mind getting to 140, 150 shares if this one stays and it's pulled back. So I like that it's pulled back and even pulled back even further than where, it's, where I bought it earlier in the week. So I'm hoping that it stays down in the low to mid 70s next week and I can continue to build out this position. But we did pick up those six shares of ticker LRCX out of the information technology sector at $76.61. We added to our alphabet position ticker GOOGL, another one out of the information technology sector. We picked up four more shares at $164.91. We've been picking up shares pretty regularly now in the 164, 163, 162 range. I'd love this to drop back into the 150s, 140s or even lower, but it's where it is. So we're going to continue to build this one out. This is another one. I'd love to get to 100 shares while it's under 170. Uh, and I'd love for it to pull back, like I said, even further. Uh, the new shares here, this new capital and the new shares picked up added an additional $19.59. You know, that's not a lot uh, because Lamb Research and Alphabet are pay a very, very low dividend yield. Uh, so we're not getting a whole lot of income added with these new positions, but they're hopefully Alphabet hasn't raised theirs, but Lamb Research is a double digit grower. So, uh, or, or I believe they will be a double digit grower here. So I'm hoping that both of these positions, their growth will make up for their low dividend yield. Now, we weren't done. We went back in on the 18th, which was Friday, added an additional $492.74. We picked up two more shares of Valet, ticker V-A-L-E, picked up those two shares at $10.77, picked up two more shares for our Nutrient position. This is also a foreign company. This is a Canadian company here out of the material sector. Uh, so same thing. You want to understand whether or not your brokers is going to be picking up those taxes or whether you're going to have to pay it at the end of the year. Uh, and either way, it's getting paid. It's just a matter of are they paying your brokers taking it out right away? Like, so my brokers takes it out before they buy more dividends. If my if Nutrient pays out dividends, my brokers will take out the taxes before it reinvests the rest of dividends. And then I don't have to worry about it. I get a, at the end of the year, I get a bank statement and it shows that my taxes are already taken care of. Otherwise, I would have to pony up the cash uh, at tax time. But anyways, talk to your tax advisor if you need tax advice. I'm not a tax advisor. I'm definitely not your tax advisor. But two more shares at $48.40 there to our nutrient position. And these next two are our weekly dividend ETFs that we are picking up. Schwab just recently did a dividend split, uh, three for one split. So for every one share you had, you got three shares. So I was adding one share per week. I'm going to be adding three shares per week now. So we did pick up our three shares of the Schwab Strategic Dividend Growth ETF, ticker SCHD, picked up those three shares at $28.70 per share. And the Vanguard total stock market, that's exactly what it is. It's the New York Stock Exchange, the total market, the United States market there, 
uh, and ticker VTI. This is the second ETF. We're going to be picking up at least one share of this ETF. I'd love this one to pull back as well. Love for a little pullback into the market so I can get these cheaper, but we're going to be adding regardless of the price, at least one share of VTI and at least three shares of SCHD now going forward. Now this $492.74 did add an additional 13 0.16, so $13.16 in passive income over the next calendar year. Total invested $1,719.93. Total passive income added with the new shares purchased $36.18. Quick run through the sector weights here. As you can see, communications makes up 10.51% of the portfolio. Consumer discretionary at 5.24. And this one I'm going to be adding to if uh, Haverty Furniture stays pulled back. I think I'm going to add a little bit there next week. Consumer staples at 9.30. Energy makes up 5.79% of the portfolio. This little sliver here is the financials at 2.65%. I don't mind having a smaller position in financials. Eventually, I will probably add something here or add something back in here. Uh, but for right now, SCHD has such a high... Uh, holding weight is so highly weighted in financials that I'm not as concerned with this, but I would probably like to add one more here. Uh, really thinking of something like uh, American Express, if there was a pullback there. I know a lot of people are buying Visa right now. Uh, I haven't really decided which one I like better. You know, MasterCard's another one in there, but something along those lines in the credit card industry. I, obviously, everyone pays by card now. I think that's going to continue to increase and expand over time as. You know, people get away from using dollars and change. Uh, so something in there I might add back in, but we'll see. Nothing. I'm, what I really want to focus on building out Google and LAM research right now. So I'm not looking to add another position. But if there was a big pullback there, uh, like I said, American Express, Visa, maybe even MasterCard would be something I'd like to add into the portfolio. Healthcare sits at 13.59% of the portfolio. Industrials at 665 Technology makes up 11.45% of the portfolio. Materials at 845 Utilities sitting at 9.13% of the portfolio. REITs and real estate at 919 And ETFs is starting to become a larger position, and that is going to continue to increase over time. This will eventually overtake the entire portfolio and be the largest position just by the nature of adding to it every single week, especially with VTI. I mean, that's you know $300 here every single week, uh, week in and week out. Now over here to the right, you can see the portfolio sector weights. Here's the percentages that match the pie over here. Here's the dollar amount allocated to each sector as well. And here it is, the weekly portfolio update. I know a lot of you come here to see this. And again, I want to be as fully transparent as possible on this channel. So I like to show my portfolio every week so you can see what I'm buying, what I'm doing, how that impacts the portfolio, positions that are up or down. You know, it's okay to see red in your portfolio. Uh, Warren Buffett famously said, if you can't handle a uh, stock dropping by 50%, you shouldn't be in the market. And they, you know, they're, it's going to fluctuate. Markets go up, markets go down, individual positions go up and down. If you have done your research and you understand what a good company is, you know, you, you check the metrics that you've set up for yourself and you see a pullback, if nothing's changed about the fundamentals of the business, you should buy more. If you're willing to buy it at $120, say, if it drops to $100, you should be willing to buy more, right? You don't run into a store and see a sale and run out, say, I'm not buying anything today because it's cheaper. No, you probably are going to buy more. If you went in there for a pair of jeans, you might be walking out with two pairs of jeans instead. That's the way it should be in the market. The stock market seems to be the only market where people see red and they run away. So that is why I want to show my portfolio transparently every week so you can see sometimes positions are down. Sometimes you're going to see red and sometimes you're going to see up. That's part of the market. Every position you have is going to have a 52-week low and a 52-week high. And that stock can touch that 52-week low or that 52-week high any time during the year. It can set a new 52-week low. Uh, and, and that is, again, part of the reason I want to show my portfolio. One, so some of you newer investors out there who maybe are thinking about it or just getting started and are starting to see some red in some positions, you don't freak out and panic sell. Uh, and, and for those of you who may not have been have started your portfolio yet, it maybe will hopefully give some of you the encouragement and the enthusiasm to hopefully start your portfolio. It, you can do it too. Again, I'm just a regular guy. I go to work every day. This is not what I went to school for. I've learned everything I've learned along the way, and I've been fully transparent about the mistakes I've made, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes also. All right, I'm going to get down off the soapbox here. Uh, let me know if you've recently started your dividend growth investing journey in the comment section down below. Love to hear from you. 
But in this column, you can see the ticker. This is all the different positions in the portfolio. Total shares as of the close of business on Friday. Current price as of the close of business on Friday. The market value. Average cost per share. So this is my average cost per share. This does include reinvested dividends, whether I'm up or down here or what I have into the position. Again, this does include reinvested dividends. Uh, total return, whether I'm up or down in this column, percent up or down here. Obviously, you can see some positions are in the red. Uh, in Valet, for example, I've been buying because it's in the red. Uh, NTR, another one in the red. So I add to positions whenever they're in the red. It's not the only time I add to them. Google, I obviously added four more shares here, right? It's up 3.18%. Uh, LRCX, I'm adding here. This one has really dropped down. Again, I really like that it's in the low 70s. I'm going to be able to bring my cost basis as I build this one out currently with 90 shares. I'd love this to get this to, you know, 120 to 150 shares, uh, if not a 200 share position here and make it one of the larger positions in my portfolio. Like I said, I love the dividend growth on it, 15%. Uh, but here we'll continue to cross. This is the sector each position falls in, whether they're a quarter, monthly, semi-annual payer. Current yield as of the closing business on Friday, my yield on cost, the portfolio weighting. So what we saw on the previous slide was each sector weightings. This is each individual positions weighting. And I do have a, a bit of a rule in the portfolio. I don't want any one position to be more than 10% of the portfolio. I don't want any one sector to be more than 20 to 25% of the portfolio. Though I will say ETFs is going to break that rule, right? Eventually, they will probably be more than 20 to 25 percent of the portfolio. Estimated annual income, right? That's what we all like to see. Payout months here, dividend growth year over year, and where it sits at 15 percent of a 52-week low in this column. Uh, if you've been watching the channel, you know I use this as kind of a benchmark. I want to keep where it sits at 15 percent of a 52-week low. I want to keep my average cost per share below that. Now, that's you know not a hard and fast rule, but it gives me something to kind of shoot for. There are positions, for example, SYY I've been adding to a little bit this month, right? It's well above uh, my cost basis at $75, $74. I think I even bought it at $76 at one point. Uh, but my cost basis is so low at $68. It's still under where it sits at 15% of a 52-week low, $71.57. So I could still nibble on this a little bit. And so long as I keep this under $71.57, it, it doesn't bother me. I don't mind bringing my cost basis up. And obviously, this will go up as the cost basis changes from year to year. So currently, total shares, 6,107.596 shares. Market value of $316,168.56. I have $279,544.18 into the portfolio. This does include reinvested dividends. Total return, $36,624.37. I am up 13.1%, but that is not really what I focus on. Obviously, nice to see. Don't get me wrong. I like that I'm up. But really, does that mean anything? Unless I sell the positions, I don't get this $36,000, or $36, right? So I have to sell all the positions to get the gain. That's not the... And that's not the purpose of this portfolio. I don't want to be out selling and, and buying shares all the time. I'd like to uh, hold these positions as long as possible. So what I really focus on is, is the dividends. Current yield 3.781% of the market and my yield on cost 4.277%. This, this is what I'm focused on. That's why it's circled in red. This goes up or I typically like to see it going up. Obviously, it went down here uh, last week whenever we sold out of Bank of America and bought into LRCX, LAM Research here. Uh, and so sometimes that that does happen whenever we sell out our position and reinvest the dividends. I like to see it work out the other way where they go up, but sometimes it does go down. But typically, <laughs> it doesn't matter what the market's doing, whether the market's up, whether the market's down, whether the market's floating sideways. This continues to grow week after week as I add new capital as the positions in the portfolio pay out dividends, as those dividends are reinvested buying more shares, and as those share new shares add additional capital, right? That's that dividend snowball. So it gets bigger week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter, year over year, and currently sits at $11,955.09. We will definitely make it over the $12,000 mark here by the end of the month, I believe. Uh, if not the first week in September for sure, but I believe by the end of the, the month, probably next week, we'll be very, very close to being over $1,000 a month in dividends. So very, very nice to see back on the right track there from a little step back from selling those Bank of America shares last week. And dividend growth year over year sits at 16 point, or 6.24%. Not sad. I'd love it to sit at 16.24%. 6.24%.
Well, that is really it for this one. Let me know what you're buying this week. Are you adding any new positions uh, with markets at all-time high? Are you selling any positions and taking uh, some profits, maybe setting some cash on the side? I know Warren Buffett has a huge cash supply right now, so I don't know if he expects a downturn or if he just likes to hold cash. I believe he's always said he likes to hold cash, but I think it's gotten uh, to be a very, very large position. Uh, cash position right now. So he must be eyeing something for a big pullback or just waiting for an opportunity. And maybe you're doing the same. Let me know in the comment section down below. Are you selling any positions and putting some cash on the side maybe for a pullback? Do you sell options? If so, what are you running options on and how is that going for you? And again, what did you buy this week? What are you looking to buy next week? And we are almost right? A little over halfway in October. So what are you looking to buy as we head into November, right? That round out the last couple months of quarter four, 2024. Well, as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done it already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up, ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of the positions. If you were watching the video last week, what did you think about selling out of Bank of America to add lamb research? Uh, what would you have added instead if you don't like that? I do personally read and respond to the comments. I am always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. And this is Shane signing off. Wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes with those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend, and we will see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I am only sharing my opinion and investing in general, educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can as money. You should never invest any amount you're not comfortable with. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria or seek the advice and counsel of a certified financial advisor.